Well, everybody, welcome. My name is James Negelvoort. I'm the Director of Strategic Capital Projects with the City of San Diego, and I want to thank you all for joining us today. This is a, a wonderful turnout for all of us that are working on the pier. We're very, very pleased that you're joining us. Uh, just by a show of hands, how many of you made it to our April event? Yeah, very good. Th thank you for coming back. So I'm going to recognize the rest of you weren't, didn't attend the April event, but don't worry about that, and thank you for joining us. Um, we got a 35-minute presentation. It's about o Ocean Beach Pier and the renewal effort to move forward and trying to figure out how to build a new pier. Uh, the presentation is going to cover a little bit, it's going to repeat a little bit about what we've talked about in April to get the rest of you up to speed. I'm not gonna go into the same level of detail though. And then afterwards, today's event is really about getting more feedback from all of you about what type of amenities would you be interested in that's possible for a new peer in that, um, in that going forward. Um, there's a couple of big thank yous. I wanna thank the university for hosting us. I really, really appreciate it, it's a beautiful facility. We have our ice cream vendor who has suddenly turned out to be very popular. So we wanna thank them providing in that. Uh, we also want to uh, thank the Tennyson family who has provided us fishing poles. I have no idea who has got what pole or who won in that, but thank, thank them for, uh, for providing all of that. We certainly appreciate that. Now, we're going to make a presentation that's going to take about 30, 35 minutes. We're not going to take any questions up here in order to get through this entire presentation. But afterwards, we're gonna ask you to go find somebody that looks like, you know, has a name tag like I got on right now. Some of the representation that's here today is some amazing people that represent our task force. So we have an Ocean Beach Pier Renewal Task Force. Uh, there are members that are throughout. I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna read off your first name if you can wave at the group. Corey, back there. Uh, Danny or Denise, sitting down right there. Uh, Andrea, way back in the corner. Uh, Stu, Stuart, I heard it, but I didn't see it. There he is, okay, carrying chairs, thank you, Stu. And that, uh, Ralph, I know Ralph's here, there's Ralph, all right, way back there. Mark, all right, Mark's right there. Nicole, is Nicole here? Oh, there's Nicole back there. Uh, I'm James Negelvoort, Elizabeth, where are you at? All right, Delpha, way in the back. Coda, way in the back, and then also Manuel. So all of the people that just waved at you, at the end of this presentation, they're available to answer questions. I will be over there. If you want to come and talk to me, I'll answer your questions. Try to make your questions about the peer, but if you have other questions, I'll try to answer them too. Um, also, we have a lot of representation from our, our great consultant team, Moffat and Nichols, and then they have a whole series of subs that are helping and pu pushing this forward in that. Uh, they're going to go uh, afterwards and introduce themselves in this presentation of that. Now, today's event is about a new peer, but we do want to give you a little update on the existing peer that's out there. So the existing peer took some damage over the winter storms. Uh, and it's, I don't know about you guys, but it felt for me like this was a very long winter this year in San Diego. We waited for all the storms to get done. We brought the consultants on in afterwards in the month of April, started to do assessments. Uh, the good news is that the pier underneath structure, the superstructure, the piles, the pile caps, the part that holds the pier on up is sound. We can, we can reopen the pier. Now, I don't want you to think that that means that the pier is not at the end of its useful life. It still is. We still need to do our effort, and we still need to talk about the future for a new pier in that. Um, the pier surface, I mean, maybe you guys have probably already seen this. Some of the railings have been knocked down. They've been damaged. City forces are out there now um, repairing all of that. The uh, bait shop has taken some damage, and there's a sump pump that needs to be replaced on there, so the work going forward. So work has started to, uh, to, to be able to make those repairs. We anticipate in the month of July, I'm sorry that I don't have a specific date for you, but this month of July, we anticipate being able to reopen the pier going forward in that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> but again, now that you heard that, we still need to talk about a new pier, so I don't want you to all think, that it, because it survived one winter that it's gonna go another 50 years, it, it's not. It, it's not time for us as a community to talk about a new peer. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to our consultant. This is uh, Matthew Martinez. He is uh, head, head of Moffat and Nickel. And he is, he is gonna introduce a whole bunch of consultants and I'm gonna turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, James. Mm -hmm. You see the agenda here before you. Uh, we're gonna to talk to you about not only what we've heard, but we'll be presenting six guiding principles. 
today that will uh, be uh, paramount in the development of the new pier. They'll be presented for your consideration. Uh, after the presentation, there'll be, as you'll hear, listening stations and engagement opportunities at six different tables in the back. And probably most importantly, at, not, at uh, 3.30, it will be uh, awarding the 10 fishing poles to uh, must be present people that are here with the raffle. Uh, I'm a structural guy. Uh, come to uh, the project, uh, having been born and raised in San Diego, Ocean Beach, Point Loma, was there on opening day, and have uh, surfed the spot before the pier was there, and uh, certainly know uh, the pier from uh, the perspective of an engineering consultant, as well as uh, from a citizen. Uh, Moffat & Nickel is a firm that uh, develops pier and waterfront facilities all over the world. Uh, but the project is so diverse and so significant that uh, we really need a very strong team of uh, uh, supporting uh, subconsultants in order to make this work. I'm pleased to say that I have what I think is the uh, number one urban design outfit in the country, Civitas, represented by Scott Jordan here behind me. You'll be hearing from him. Uh, as well as the firm of Rosling, Nakamura, Tarada, or R&T. Uh, they've been seminal in developing projects up and down uh, the coast of uh, San Diego County. Uh, Cook and Schmidt, we wouldn't be anywhere without their gargantuan efforts in public relations, as indicated today, John Schmidt behind me. Uh, there's a track of uh, historic historicity in regards to the pier. We'll talk about that in a minute and we have heritage, architecture, and partners. Uh, also, uh, this is a fishing pier, first and foremost, and uh, we have what a gentleman that I think is the foremost authority on pier fishing in California, indicated by the book there, Pier, pier Fishing, and that's uh, Ken J uh, Jones, he's also on the team. So I'd like all of the people that are affiliated with the design group uh, to stand up and just kind of Raise your hands and everybody stand up, come on. <laughs> Worthy of applause, but the reason I'm doing that is so that uh, when you have the tough questions, I can send them, uh, send you guys to them and not just to me. There is a website, www.obupeerrenewal.com. Everything in regards to the project ultimately gets up there, so take advantage of seeing that. And there's a timeline. Uh, I think we have a board somewhere in the house that reflects this slide, but basically uh, the top tier is uh, indicative of the design effort in which we really have, we're right here at public meeting number two. So that's where we are in the process. This is approximately a two-year process. Uh, the design phase will have a planning study culminating in October and then a schematic design phase, which will take us through roughly spring of next year, and then a preliminary design phase, which will take us towards the end of the year, resulting in a design build set of uh, specifications and drawings that can go out uh, to bid for contractors. Beneath that is a whole other uh, concurrent row of uh, CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act, and uh, pr environmental permitting track, which has to take place kind of simultaneously in order for us to be successful with the project. I mentioned the historicity in regards to the pier. The City of San Diego Municipal Code has what's known as a historical resources board. Any structure of importance that's more than 45 years old needs to go through the scrutiny of that board, and that's there, it's in place to protect all of us in the community in terms of uh, what we can or cannot do in regards to uh, structures and facilities that we all know and love. Uh, this is uh, going through the process of HRB review right now, and there's a public meeting that's scheduled on June 22nd. If you go to cityofsandiego.gov, uh, there'll be a link to uh, development services, public hearings, and you can find this, but 
basically June 22nd, 1 p.m., City College. If you want to get up and speak as to whether you have an opinion as this, should this be a historical resource or is it really not a historical resource, that would be an opportunity for uh, you as a member of the public to make your voice heard in that regard. There's also been a lot of questions in regards to what a new peer might cost. Uh, we did a report as Moffat and Nickel in 2018 in which we speculated just to replace essentially what's there, demolish and replace somewhere between 40 to $60 million. And we all know since 2018 uh, what has happened in terms of costs. There's been inflation, there's been supply chain shortages, any number of uh, things that could affect that number. We also know that in order to have this pier really last for the next 75 to 100 years, we're going to need to make it higher so that we get it out of the waves and uh, we can uh, uh, address the potential of sea level change, uh, sea level rise, some people say. Uh, also, we'll be doing using materials that are better structurally in terms of constructing the pier for a better longevity as well as probably some mandated accessibility improvements to be able to get more people out on the pier to enjoy it more of the time. Uh, so that brings us to the current day and we estimate that number somewhere around 50 to 70 million. Now you'll be working at tables today and you'll have an opportunity to weigh in as to what kind of amenities uh, the pier should maybe have more restaurants, more shops, more areas for learning, more areas maybe for uh, gathering or other things. Those things all could add to the cost of the pier. Uh, the design process, uh, right now we're in this uh, one second bubble right here where we're rolling out guiding principles. The next stage will be in October. Uh, the design options in which we'll be uh, rolling out three potential options for your consideration, for the uh, city council's consideration, the task force. Uh, that will then lead us to a preferred concept spring of next year in which we'll select one of the three that's going to be the one that we'll roll with. Uh, that will then lead us to uh, preparation of design documents as we go further into the next calendar year. Along the way, there will be what we call pop-ups, uh, events uh, like we were at the Kite Festival for Ocean Beach. Just recently we had a pop-up structure there, taking in information, taking in suggestions. We were at Day at the Docks at the uh, uh, Ocean Beach uh, Fair, and so we would be doing uh, things like that. Um, and with that, John, you're going to come up and you're going to talk about what we've heard thus far. Hi, I'm John Schmidt with Cook and Schmidt, and my team's been doing the public outreach around this project. And uh, it, we want this pier to be basically reflect what the community wants. And remember, this pier serves all of San Diego, the whole San Diego region. It's based in Ocean Beach. But uh, we really started with a blank slate with no ideas and just started by listening to people. And we've been, as uh, Matthew mentioned, we've been going to uh, fairs and festivals all over the entire region. And these include uh, going to things like farmer's markets and, and uh, he mentioned the Kite Festival and we went to the uh, Convoy District uh, Asian Pacific Islander Festival. We were in uh, Barrio Logan at Chicano Days. So really trying to get out there and talk to the whole really San Diego region and understand what they feel about the pier. And we have also made uh, information uh, available to, on the website and people can scan the QR code and uh, take surveys and answer questions. So to start out, as I said, it really was a blank slate. And we ask really broad questions of the public, like what does the pier mean to you? Uh, we, were not, we didn't want to ask them about specific ideas, about certain things, uh, just really, really broad. And ask them as well, what's, what's missing from the pier in your opinion? And so to just get some ideas about what the pier means to the community, uh, what sort of uh, values uh, are reflected in that. And based on that information, 
we then developed a set of guiding principles to which will be presented today. And uh, from this point now, the campaign is really pivoting and we'll start to uh, get more specific and ask people about very much more specific things as we develop the ideas for what the peer could include. So I'm gonna talk uh, about some of the things. First of all, talk about where we went. Uh, so Ocean Beach uh, residents accounted for about 25% of the feedback we got. We've collected over 500 comment cards uh, so far and talked to many, many more people than that. I think that we probably you know, maybe one in five people take the time to fill out a comment card. Uh, but about 24% of those from Ocean Beach. Uh, Central San Diego region was about 33%. Uh, south, south region of San Diego is 13%. Uh, east region was about 10%. And the north region of the San Diego County area was uh, about 9%. And then outside, there are people who, you know, gave us feedback and they're not from San Diego and they're, they're tourists, and, but they had opinions about the pier as well. So just gonna talk a little bit about what we heard. As I said, you know, around 500 comment cards so far. And uh, we just asked people, uh, we gave them the option uh, to, to tell us that they didn't want there to be a peer. And very, very few people said that. Uh, it was in single digits. Uh, so overwhelmingly, uh, San Diego residents love the OB peer and they're, they're passionate about it and care about it and, and wanna see, see the peer rebuilt. <laughs> So uh, we took this open-ended uh, data and sat down to analyze it and tried to categorize things. And this is an indication of what people were telling us. When we asked them, what do you value about the peer? What do you like about the peer? Tell us about your ideas about the peer. People talked about access, access to the ocean. And I think this is really important because it, it enables people to get out there and, and see the ocean. And I've been out there twice in the last couple months uh, as part of this work. And, you know, for example, there's, there's both times there's a pot of dolphins that are right there. And they were feeding and they were there for a really long time. And you can get really close to the birds, the pelicans. And, and so it provides that kind of access and walks and the views that it provides. It's, it's a great view out to the ocean, but also back to the land is a great view as well. People talked about the family traditions and the memories that it brings. A lot of people called it an icon of Ocean Beach. They used it literally that term, icon. And of course, people loved it for fishing and it creates a sense of community. People mentioned businesses, restaurants. People were concerned about the maintenance of the pier, understandable. Uh, it's been a little beat up over the last few years. Uh, tourism was mentioned as, as one of the things important for the pier. Education and science is something I'm really interested in personally. And, and a lot of people talked about that. Um, you know, maybe it could be a platform for educating kids about science and the environment. And then, of course, surfing, parking, parking's an issue, and then art was mentioned as well. And just to uh, give some background, we asked people different questions in different ways. So all this data is not necessarily 100% consistent, but it kind of depends what question you're answering. So I do want to say one thing. I'm going to wrap up now. I do want to say one thing that we have a table, special table for the kids. And uh, I don't see Ralph over there. It looks like you want it off. But no Nicole, Nicole, will you raise your hand, please? So Nicole's back there, and at that table, we invite the kids to come, and we're going to give them a little bit more background about some of the engineering issues about the pier, and then take them to the same uh, exercises that you're all going to go through. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Rick Espana to talk about some of the other details. Thank you so much. I'm Rick Espana with R&T Architects. And I see a lot of familiar faces here today, which is great. Um, as Matt pointed out, on April 1, we had our first community open house. Uh, and the whole idea about that open house was listening. Before we, we developed any ideas or thoughts, or we want to just hear from you. So um, combined with the information that John's team has gathered, we're going to go through some of the highlights of that open house now. Um, so if you recall, there were several of these, what we call listening stations. This was one of them. It, it was about what does the peer mean to you? And it was, we got a lot of great comments on it. We got all these uh, little thought bubbles that were added to it. I, I don't know the exact number, but we recorded all of them. And then we came up with these common themes, which you'll, you'll see here. The most important is, you know, uh, the pier is an important community gathering and, and recreation location. Uh, the other one was, you know, the pier is nostalgic for many users. Uh, it's historically significant landmark for many. 
Um, many enjoy sunset watching. Uh, that was a key one too. The pier is a notable tourist attraction. Looking forward, and then the, another one was uh, looking forward. Um, many note the importance of the environmental considerations and sustainability. Um, in general, these, these were just comments that reflected the community, and there's a lot of, in fact, if we don't have this board here today, but we'll bring it to one of the future um, uh, events, and there's a lot of great little comments just about people's feelings about you know, something great about the experience on the pier, so we'll have that later. Uh, we also did this dot exercise, but, and the question was, what is missing from the pier experience? As you can see, there was, I want to say there was probably over 200 uh, dots added here, so we got great input. And just some of the, the highlights of that, you know, we heard public art was important, uh, quality restrooms, uh, outdoor dining, more shade, uh, a, an outdoor classroom, uh, clean energy generation. A lot of great ideas were, was gathered from that activity. And then, um, I don't know, for those of you who were here, there was a large six foot by six foot board, and we asked the question, um, what do you know that we should know about the pier? And there was a lot of great comments. I, I wanna say probably over, um, like 80 comments. I see Kaylee over there, she helped record all those uh, comments. Uh, but some of the common themes were, again, improved access is important, uh, views back, not only looking to the pier from the beach, but also from the pier looking back and out, uh, provide opportunities for public art, interpretive signage, environmentally sensitive design, uh, and protect and enhance the existing uses such as um, surfing and fishing, but we also need more amenities and more furnishings. So we took all that information, we took the information from John's efforts, from the online surveys, and we came up with these guiding principles. So what, what are the guiding principles? Basically, they, they represent the shared values from, all, from everything we've heard, from the, the task force meetings, the, from the community outreach, and basically it's, it's the, uh, what we call the, the aspirations of the project. How will they be used? Well, as Matt was pointing out, we're gonna be coming back with several design options. So these are gonna be used to kind of guide and make sure that those options are meeting those uh, guiding principles. And later on, you'll see there's an activity. We actually have the guiding principles back at the back wall, so you can go through them in more detail. And we're gonna ask you to rank them in priority. But what they are not, they're not specific goals. Um, those will be de developed later. Once we kind of get your input on those guiding principles, then we'll come up with a list of goals. So let me go through those guiding principles right now. So this first one is, um, it's honor the history, but look to the future. Obviously, we have, uh, the piers has a very rich 56-year history to it. Um, and, and even goes beyond, the beach area goes beyond that, right? All the way to the, the Kumeyaay. Uh, but at the same time, we're, we're actually this blip in its time scale, right? So we don't only really need to look at the, the past, but also think about the future, the next 100 years of the pier. Respect the environment, that's very important. Um, the, the pier should be this model for sustainability. Um, it, you know, it also should minimize environmental impacts, uh, be resilient to future climate action and, and waves, um, and uh, sea level changes that Matt talked about earlier. And uh, just, it should be uh, just, again, I, I get, we use the word model, but it just should be this, I wanna say structure that represents um, that others can look at in the future for peers. Ensure safe and equitable access. So this is very important too, because not all of us get to go out on a boat, get out to the sea or get to surf. So this provides equitable access to the community as well as uh, all San Diegans and visitors. And then reflect the community. So while it's designed to serve all of San Diegans, the Ocean Beach Pier should still reflect the community of Ocean Beach. Maximize value. This was equally important too. So the pier should provide the most benefit and length of service to the community. And finally, um, enhance and diversify the uh, experience. So in addition to um, fishing um, and its current uses, how can we expand those um, um, experience? Jordan here will explain to you an exercise we have uh, for that effort. So with that being said, here's Scott Jordan with Civitas.
thanks, Rick. And uh, yeah, as you said, I'm Scott Jordan. I'm a principal at a firm called Civitas. Um, I get to talk to you about the fun stuff, the opportunities and constraints of the peer, and, and really begin to talk to you all today about ideas you might have for what the peer could look like. You know, as designers, we, we really want to start drawing, but we haven't yet. And we're really using today as a way to kind of invite you all to help us draw, to get our minds going so that when we start drawing, it, it's built from you and not from ourselves. And so in order to think about the peer, I think it's important to understand the history of peers as a, as a construct. Um, historically in North America, they were built as working peers, right? They were an area of commerce and for financial viability and shipping. Uh, on the West Coast and in most of Europe, there was this idea introduced of pleasure peers, a way to get out and experience the ocean, a way to get out and fish, you know, the California fishing peers. That's what a lot of what you see in Southern California are, more of these pleasure peers um, but peers today, right, they're not just about one singular experience. They're about people and how they use a peer, how they're programmed and activated, and a lot of them are looking at the ecology of the environment that they're in and can they improve the environment that they're within. And I think those are the strategies we want to see employed for the future of Ocean Beach Pier. Um, in the region, you have a lot of great piers. We're working on a few of them right now. I think you have the traditional fishing piers, which are the long linear experience out to the end and back. And then you got a few unique ones. You know, Santa Monica Pier is unique. I'm not suggesting we do Santa Monica Pier in Ocean Beach, but Redonda Beach has an interesting pier, Crystal Pier Cottages, and then Imperial Beach Pier, again, very linear pier. So our big question is, what is possible for Ocean Beach Pier and what do you as the community want this pier to become as it looks towards the future? So there's a lot of things that we talk about when it comes to design. The first one being, how does the pier meet the land, right? Right now it's kind of perched up high. It's a little difficult to get to if you have mobility issues unless you're coming off Niagara Street. So, you know, when it meets the land, do we want to have an elevator connection? Do we want to consider an elevated ramp connection down? Um, do we want to build the ramps into a stair connection and kind of create a place at where the pier lands and meets the land? Do we want to consider improvements to the pier and look at how that might affect the beach and access to the, the ocean and the seawall? Um, do we want to touch the land really lightly and have the pier and any access float above it and not really impact the, the, the at-grade condition? Do we want to create an arrival space or a landing when you arrive at the pier? Um, is it a built-in landing or is it a peer and beach relationship? We're not saying any of these are the right ideas, they're just possibilities and it's a way to kind of open your minds and think a little bit about what you would like to see for your peer. Um, the relationship of a peer to an ocean, you know, we're a Denver-based firm, I spend a lot of time, a lot of my time in Southern California. The ocean experience is something quite majestic and what is that relationship for the pier and to the water now. Right now, it kind of just sits over it. You know, the, the, the traditions of the youth lifeguard jump. Do we want to celebrate that with the new design of the pier? Do we want to consider ways to look down and view the wave action, the surfing, all the things that go on below you, below the pier right now? It's a solid kind of pier structure, so you can't see through it. Do we want to consider areas where you can see through and look at the ocean straight down below your feet? You know, would we want to consider an infinity edge to the ocean where the railing kind of disappears, it's still there, but you can't see it. So that your experience walking out on the pier is this infinite area of ocean could be a cool experience. Um, how do we enhance surfing? How do we enhance the fish habitats and the environment below the pier? And then do we want to consider an underwater experience? That might be a, a little far reaching, but again, it's just to open up our minds and think a little bit broadly about what we want it to be. Um, a big part of a, a peer experience is the strolling, right? Walking out to the end and experiencing it. How do you want that to be? Is it layered? Do you have an iconic feature that draws you out to the end? Is it really just about the long, simple view out to the end of the pier? Do we want to have some protected or shaded strolling? You know, being in the sun, if you're out there for a long time, having a little bit of shade could be nice. Do we want to introduce moments or objects that create a, a, a kind of a discovery as you work your way out to the end of the pier? Do we want to have different levels of strolling or different levels of experiences? Or do we want it to be just a quiet, simple stroll where you're not interrupted by a lot of things? Or do we have a lot of activity zones that really create energy as you make your way out to the pier? We can do any of these, we can do none of these. The idea today is to hear what you all want as we think about that. And then what's the retail experience of the pier? Right now you do have fishing rentals and we do think that access to fishing is a really important part of the pier experience. 
you have the historic cafe. Do we want to continue to have the cafe? Do we want to include a community room out there? Do we want to, if we rebuild the pier, do we want to get a rooftop experience on top of the cafe to create a different elevational experience with the water? Um, do we want to consider multiple food vendors or just keep it to one simple one, right? There's a lot of ways you can think of it. Do we want to add some outdoor dining with a view to that retail experience to make that retail experience maybe a little bit more viable longer term? Or, or do we want to introduce some interesting kiosks? This example on the screen here is actually in St. Petersburg. And what's really interesting is they're permanent vendor cubicles, but they actually have art on them. So when they're closed, it's still an interesting object to experience, but then they open them up and they can sell their wares rather than having it be temporary. It's somewhat planned and permanent, a little bit more fixed experience. Again, we could do any of these. We don't need to do any of them. How do you want to gather? I think having people linger and exist on the pier and be there for longer periods of time should be a goal when we get to the goal phase of the project. You know, should those be intimate? Should they be shaded? Is it built in and custom or is it big flexible areas where you can do a variety of different events on the pier? Um, do we want some lounge seating? Do you want an amphitheater event seating? You know, you could create a surfing experience where you have competitions and you have an actual amphitheater there or we don't do that at all. Or do you want just simple flexible seating so that anybody can find a place that they're comfortable sitting and just lingering on the pier? And then we heard a lot at the first meeting about interpretation and the art experience. And there's a variety of different ways you can do that. The art can be interactive, so it draws you in and, and gives you something to look at and experience every time you come out to the pier. It could be more fixed as a sculpture that's more freestanding. Um, it could be graphic and, and visual. You could paint the deck of the pier in a really interesting mural that draws you out to the end. Or it can be integrated. The North Embarcadero in San Diego, that was a concept of art becoming buildings and architecture becoming art. And so the art wasn't a standalone piece. It was a part of the overall infrastructure to that project. Um, how do we want to do interpretive and educational elements? Are they fixed? simple signs or is it visual and graphic and more interpretive and, and more of a light show that reflects what the waves are doing? Um, how do we want to introduce this idea of clean energy and clean energy labs? There's a lot of great ocean-based resources here and educational opportunities out here in Southern California. Can we make the pure learning experience so people learn more about the ocean when they visit it? And then what are the amenities? I'm not going to go through each of these, but you know, we'll want to do stuff for fishing. We'll want lighting. We'll want seating. We'll want upgraded restrooms, maybe a community room, some branding, some view scopes. All of these are going to be playing cards that we're going to have you guys help us think about what the design of the pier should be. And we heard at the first meeting, there needs to be some more amenities. There's very few benches and very few things to do or even objects that make it more comfortable to be on the pier. That's what these can begin to do for you. And so now the, the fun part of what we're going to do is we're going to ask when we're done, everybody to go through and participate in a series of different exercises. And this is just to create a variety of different ways that we can hear what you want, what you like, what you don't like. The first one is, is this idea of the guiding principles. And of Coda, just wave his hand at the back there. Um, we have all the guiding principles across the back. We've got these little uh, postcards, and we're asking you to rank them on your priority list. You know, number one being your favorite or most preferred guiding principle, six being your least favorite. Again, you know, we had one task force member say, it's kind of like picking your favorite child. These are all important. We get that. It's about making difficult decisions, but it's just trying to understand where your priorities are and how that we can reflect that as we move forward with the design. The next exercise that we have are across the right-hand side here, and that's all those amenities and activities strolling that we talked about. Um, we have an individual board for each activity. Each one has a, a number on it of the number of dots we want you to put on it. You'll get 20 dots. Each board has a specific number we want you to use. We're trying to get it so that it can be as empirical as possible. You can get that in the back right, Corey, where Corey's standing at, at the back corner there. And then the last exercise, which is probably the most interesting, at least for us, and I think the kids are really going to enjoy this, is we've got these big tables set up where you'll get to work with a design team member and a task force member. All of the images that you saw in the presentation are on little postcards, and we want to know what your ideas are for the pier. How would you design the pier? You know, we can be the pen that draws for you. You can draw. You can write notes down. It's really intended to be an interactive opportunity where you can introduce how you want to approach the design of the pier so that we can take that and grow that as we move into the next set of meetings where we're actually showing alternatives. And so with that, that kind of concludes where we're at 
on the presentation. You can see all the, all the different images you have the choice to use. And we'll ask everybody to start working their way around and, and just participating as much as you can. So thank you guys for coming out.